Hey guys, welcome back to Ari the Stag. TR Tony here, stood in the new garage as you can see. Uh, lots slowly coming together, still quite a bit to do, but we're, we're getting there surely, but uh, slowly, <laughs> but surely. Anyway, we're getting there, so uh, that's the main thing. Uh, today um, I'm going to be looking at the air heater box in just a second. I'll walk you around that in just a minute. Um, just to recap, it's been good to look at the V8 Stag engine up on the uh, engine mount here and we've had a good walk around with that a couple of weeks ago. We also looked over to my left, you can't see it as off camera, the um, 2.5 PI, uh, 2.5 uh, S PI engine which uh, I've walked you around the injection system on that and if you haven't seen that go back a couple of weeks you'll be able to see that. So all good stuff um, but I thought today as I say I'd, I'd like to look at the uh, air heater box. It's something that I did work on um, many moons ago. It's been languishing at the side of our uh, shelves in our garage for a little while now so I'm going to get it out and have a walk around. We did do some very early videos on this but just wanted to consolidate that in one place. I'm also very mindful uh, of a gentleman out there called Stephen Bradbury who's very kindly sent me some how-to videos on how to get the uh, the heater control valve out of its body and we'll do that probably as a separate video Stephen in due course because it is worthy of a of a, a video in its own right but so today I'll just walk you around the heater box show you the various controls um, I've got a couple of manuals as well which will help the whole process but uh, good to be able to do that whilst we can't get out and about on the road uh, just to help others around the world and I'm sure if you're um, refurbishing your stag um, or if you're just interested in how these things work it will give you a little bit of insight what goes on behind the dashboard because as you know these things kind of a based in the midst of the uh, the dash on the stag and all we really see is a few levers and a few knobs and a couple of um, you know uh, kind of holes really where the air comes out so without further ado let's go over to the bench and I'll talk you through it. Ari the stag. Okay so here is the uh, heater matrix that um, as I say has been stood on the um, shelves for a little while now uh, straight out of UNY 49M I did actually knock it all down, pull it all to bits and then rebuilt it uh, a few uh, years ago now, <laughs> a couple of years ago I think it was. Uh, so I'll walk you around that in just a sec. Before I do, um, I've also found very handily um, an original Stag by Triumph manual um, that um, goes in the glove compartment and um, I think this is one of the original ones when this was printed, 1973 according to that. Uh, note on there so that's kind of quite interesting um, so I think this is one of the original ones that came with the car all about how you look after it how you knock on and off your wheels how you put your roof up and use your overdrive seat belts all the usual stuff kind of a user manual I suppose um, and all looks very smart and then what I've also found I've also got a, um, a kind of newer one that I must have bought it at a show I think which is pretty much a reprint of the original so that's kind of quite interesting to to look through and having had a quick scan through there's a lot of similarities obviously between the first one and the second one but for today's purposes I think I'll use the original because uh, it kind of feels nice and although you can't smell it it um, smells nice as well kind of that musty kind of 1970s smell so let's just have a look and see what it tells us and before anybody writes in complaining accusing me of being sexist uh, this sign was actually bought by my wife for Christmas so uh, it has pride of place in the garage and uh, I'll say no more about it. Okay so generally all we see in the cabin itself of the stag is are these kind of three levers here. You've got this one that goes vertically up and down and I'll show you how that works in just a second. Um, you've got this one that goes horizontal left to right obviously cold through to hot and defrost on the right and then on here again on uh, beg your pardon, off at the top and then all the way down to it reads car in the bottom. So I'll just um, read you through those what these all mean. Um, at the top here this is the thing that faces you in the cabin so this is where the uh, the double uh, swivel comes. I'll just go back to the manual just to show you what I mean and um, as you can see here that's what I was just talking about here that's the uh, the double swivel that you can see in the middle of the car and uh, here's the uh, fresh air louver they call it so you can turn the center bit to let air in or out and obviously you can move it on a gimbal around. So as it says here the uh, I know you've got a diagram of what I've just shown you in fact there 
uh, on top. So the blower switch um, is basically it's a two-stage blower this which um, increases the airflow into the heating and ventilation systems. Um, they can be used uh, when the car is operating the extremes of temperature at low road speeds and obviously to operate what you do is switch on the ignition obviously if I'm assuming you're running pull the knob uh, on the dashboard uh, and um, it, the first position out is the low speed and then fully out for the high speed you've got a twin uh, speed engine motor in there um, and then you've got the fresh air louver control uh, which is situated on the left of the panel uh, the lever is moved down from the off position so we're talking about this one here to provide fresh air only to the louvers uh, themselves and directional control of the fresh air is described as we've just mentioned. Um, you've got the temperature control which is the horizontal, I've just mentioned that, cold through to hot so that's a slider going that way and um, it says that the temperature setting will be inoperative if a distribution control is in the off position so that's just useful to, to know on that. And then um, situated on the right on the panel this is a distribution control itself and uh, is moved downwards from the off position to the defrost position at which all air is diverted to the windscreen so that's useful to, uh, to then be able to on a cold day hopefully uh, declutter the windscreen from either frost or um, damp and that will be very good and uh, but moving the lever further down progressively decreases the flow of air to the screen and increases the flow of air to the car until at the bottom virtually all air is being distributed to the front seats and obviously to prevent misting a minimum amount of air is always supplied to the screen so there's always some stuff coming up the top in a minute and of course these here are the pipes that, that feed out uh, into our various hoses you've got some here as well uh, which are all good. Now this you don't tend to see uh, on the car except that if you know your silver grill that you've got on the bonnet this bit sits directly underneath it so this is the kind of fresh air vent that comes into the uh, top of the, uh, the heater box itself and going back to the uh, fresh air control you'll see this lever when I move it um, actually uh, moves this thing inside so even without your motor on you can see that if I open that um, you can actually see the motor deep inside there um, but um, that will help uh, distribute fresh air to your face basically so that's how that works. We've talked a bit about the temperature control and at the front end of the film I talked about um, the removal of the uh, uh, kind of water control valve. Um, if I come around to the side to show you what I'm doing here as I'm moving this left and right you can probably start to see there's some movement up here so it's a Bowden cable that comes to the top here uh, operates a lever and if you look right down underneath we get down to the heater control uh, valve which you can see there is moving as I move that hot to cold so that is it says cold so that's when it's cold so I'm obviously opening the valve then to let the hot air or hot water rather in through and um, if you just look at the top here you'll see this is the bulkhead and this feeds into the top of the uh, hoses that eventually go to the engine so you've got a hot feed that comes in here that uh, allows it to go through or not depending on whether you've uh, opened or shut that lever and um, that is now cold and off and that is now hot and on so that's how that works and the the body here is uh, the tricky thing to get out it's a brass kind of um, body which you can remove and uh, take out and replace these get stuck a lot they can get uh, either corroded inside or stuck up full of gubbins and uh, they can be tricky but uh, as I say I will do a separate video on that one in time with Stephen Bradbury's films just to show you so that's all good uh, and then coming around to the front here uh, once more you've got the uh, the off the defrost slight defrost as we said and then all the way down let it into the car I can show you on the bench here this latter one the one I've just shown you there operates this lever underneath and this panel so you can just see that drop okay so there you go so that's in the defrost mode so air is coming from through here and then as you open it further up you're getting more to your feet and in the car itself so um, all quite clever really simple designs but um, very good to uh, to look at um, and inside if you can just see there you might be able to <laughs> is the electric motor uh, situated in there I'll see if I can start it up for a laugh all right so I've done a bit of a Heath Robinson connection up here I've got a loose old bit of wire connected to an old battery we just happened to have around the, the garage workshop um, if I can just show you with that uh, 
fresh air vent open, you can see the motor in there in the very distant uh, depths of the thing. You can just see that's the, the rotor there. I oh, can't really see with my, my hand, um, but I'll show you if it works. Uh, I've just got it connected. Up. So there you go, and there's wind blowing out straight here. So there you go, that's on the high speed. There is another setting obviously for, for the low speed as well, but you can see that like a twin fan, a quite a reliable electric, electric motor. But uh, yeah, I'm getting a wind in my hair as we speak, which is probably the most wind in my hair I've had for a long time with UNY, 49M. <laughs> so uh, it's not been run for quite some time either. So I'm quite pleased that uh, it's all working. And all I've done is just connect it very basically with a simple bit of wire and a 12 volt battery, which of course is what it would work on in the car itself. Um, obviously, there's three pins here. The other pin goes uh, at the half speed. So uh, just to go back to a full circle on what we were talking about earlier on. But I uh, hope that gives you an idea of how this old thing works. I've got one last thing just to show you and uh, I can then wrap it up. As I mentioned, the uh, pipes from the bulkhead and the engine feed come through here. Um, and uh, you can just about make out the side of this heater matrix. It's like a little mini radiator. It's not very big at all. Um, I don't know, a couple of inches wide by six or eight inches long. Um, and obviously that must be uh, cleaned out and made sure is good. Uh, but it just goes to show, that's the valve as I mentioned earlier. But that um, that just lets the, uh, the air goes through there just like a radiator and, and warms it up. But um, you can't really see it without taking the whole thing to bits but I'll just sort of show you the location of it obviously it's at the end of these pipes and that's where it is and if you can see inside maybe just see it inside yeah you can there you go so I put some um, foam on there just to protect it from various things but it's actually on the left hand side in there you can see it get reaching away in the background now of course this is the bit that you very rarely if ever see uh, if you imagine this is flush up against the uh, the scuttle on the outside of the bonnet so your air intake goes in here that's where the rain goes in as well and it's important that we kind of highlight that because um, obviously that would gather water if there wasn't a drain in it I'll just show you that in just a sec uh, but before I do um, I'll just show you the bottom of that drain there's actually a pipe here that fixes onto the I think it's the top of the tunnel um, on the car itself so uh, you must make sure that's clear at all times because that drains out to the floor um, and any loose water that gathers in your um, kind of air intake area goes into that uh, pipe and I've just turned the light on so you can see and uh, if I swizz around maybe you can see it easier if I do it this way without treading on stuff um, where are we yeah you can just see it down there look see that's the the top of the drain hole so it's very important that you keep that clear uh, because if that gets blocked obviously then you'll get uh, water in the car and that's not good. Um, the other thing for those that have been really uh, observant, you'll see, I, I, well, I did it with Plumber's Mate adv under advice from somebody um, when I put this back together and I don't think that's good enough. I think I probably need some, probably some Silka Flex or something like that that's better quality. I'm averse to put this back into UNY without breaking it all down again because I think that could be a problem. Um, it's still not stuck after a couple of years, I think, is when I did this. It's still gooey and sticky and probably not appropriate for this application. So I plan to just literally unscrew it and it's literally just metal tin. It's nothing um, too heavy at all. Uh, you can see all here the screws that you uh, undo just to take the thing apart and it all just comes to bits. So um, what I'll do, I'll, I'll redo these seams uh, before it goes back in the car because I don't want to risk water getting in here and then going into the car which would be an absolute disaster, wouldn't it? Okay, so there you go. So that's the um, Triumph Stag heater wind blower, whatever you want to call it, matrix, um, in all its glory with its uh, uh, little uh, motor inside. You've got a really good clear view of it there. And I'll just shut that up now. Um, and um, yeah, it's uh, good to understand how these things work because often uh, we're not sure quite what lever does what, but they all connect up. Uh, via these various kind of cams and Bowden cables and um, these clips since that you can get uh, still I got these I think from Rivers actually um, when I rebuilt it and uh, you can repair these with these are like star washers available on uh, most websites if you search for star washer you'll find these clips these little washers which can be can be replaced with modern ones which is what I've done here 
Um, but as I say, I will be taking it apart again to uh, make sure that it is watertight and waterproof. And as I say, I'll do a separate film about the um, heater control valve down there, which Stephen very kindly has sent me some films. And up until fairly recently, this was flying off the back of Shabley, our beloved uh, little 17 foot motor cruiser. Well, <laughs> it wasn't really a motor cruiser, more of a boat with an engine on the back. But uh, anyway, it looks kind of quite cool in the garage, I think. Very pleased about that. <laughs> it's going to stay up there permanently. All right, guys. Well, I hope you found that of use. Um, it's really good to dig into things like this that are normally hidden away in the depths of the dashboard to be able to really get into it because I know when you're working on these things inside the stag itself you almost have to get upside down and with your head right into the footwell to get anywhere near some of the stuff I've just shown you but if you've got an understanding of how all those levers work if you do lose a Bowden cable or one of those clips comes off hopefully you'll know which one which lever pushes which kind of flap so to speak uh, and also where the heater matrix is and the uh, heater control valve as well um, that has got a little o-ring on it and it's important that that moves obviously if it doesn't it gets stuck then that can cause you a problem you won't want to heat up the the car or be on hot all the time of course um, and um, they can spring leak so it's important that they're kind of serviced on a fairly regular basis because it is part of the cooling system I suppose in that respect that heater matrix obviously is like a mini radiator but it is plumbed in to the top of the engine here um, off the wire at the front actually where it comes out the uh, the hot air the hot water feed from the from the motor so that's how it all works cool okay well i hope you enjoyed it hope that uh, was useful for you uh, please feel free as ever to like share and subscribe if you know someone who you think might like to watch these films please send a link through to them we'd be very grateful and i'm sure they'll uh, get a lot out of it um, equally don't forget to uh, sign up for our saturday sockets email it's something that goes out every saturday morning in the uk and uh, we get people jumping out of bed to go read them so uh, sign up for that's all free and it's all about sharing the classic dream with Ari the Stag, which is really cool. And uh, don't forget either the badge of honor. You've got a, a, a red badge of honor sticker that you can put on your car for free. Just let us know, uh, sign up for that, and we'll send you one free of charge in the post, wherever you are in the world. And there's uh, thousands now out there. So I'm lo really looking forward to when all this lockdown is over and we can all get together in a field somewhere, maybe, or a car show and compare notes and uh, share that classic stream with Ari the Stag and all those wonderful badges of honor that I know are out there. So uh, keep those keep those coming back. Good. Okay. We'll have a great week, everybody. And uh, we'll see you online on Ari the Stag very soon. All the best. Cheers for now.